Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. Uh, we normally uh, talk about uh, Bitcoin buying, um, I mean, especially in the last couple of months, mainly by Fidelity and BlackRock and Grayscale and Kathy Wood and MicroStrategy and you get it. Um, a lot of times, one, I make sure to relay that information just so that people also realize that there's a lot of buying going on. Because years ago, whenever we got news that there was a lot of Bitcoin buying, for some reason, a lot of people didn't believe it. A lot of people years ago, uh, for some reason, only believed that individuals were actively buying Bitcoin. The idea was that especially governments would never, ever touch anything that was decentralized because it went against everything that they were trying to do. Until we started getting concrete news that the U.S. government holds 200,000 plus Bitcoin, but what have you. Uh, usually the, the narrative revolves around financial, I mean, I guess this kind of also is one, usually revolves around financial institutions and banks and also governments and also them acquiring uh, large amounts of Bitcoin. A number of years ago, we started getting news as well about like smaller businesses also buying Bitcoin, which we also spoke about a really long time ago. But that was also in the way of like uh, there was a mom and pop shop, like a literal mom and pop shop who bought, I think, like three Bitcoin and they were doing it because they liked the revolution and wanted to join. So there's a gigantic, while it's significant, there's a gigantic difference between buying three Bitcoin and buying like 17,000 Bitcoin. One of the things that often does not make the news when it comes to who's actually buying um, are, are schools. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, ex you would didn't expect it so you could but you might not would um and this actually is one of the easiest ones to us to actually uh figure out uh we have news today and we've had news before a very long time ago but i'm pretty sure a lot of people don't remember any of it uh comes from uh if you there's a university called stanford stanford university and we recently got news uh that they're actually so <laughs> I'll give it to you this way. The way that schools within large portions of the world work, but specifically for this one, for the United States, is that uh, they charge tuition. And the tuition is often quite high. And a lot of times the belief is that they're charging such a large amount for the tuition because the piece of paper that you get after the end of four years is worth it. You know, you paid... 200k for this piece of paper and you go out and be someone go into the world um i've had friends tell me before the reason for the high the camera does that weird flicker thing uh people told me before that the reason for the high prices of university in america revolves around well who's gonna pay for the pool who's gonna pay for the this thing you know when you go into the quad it has to look nice but other schools around the world managed to do that for less. Regardless of all of that, the excess money, because there's a lot of excess money, that these, almost said corporations, kind of, universities have, tends to actually go to um, endowment funds, usually funds that are within the actual university. And that amount of money that they have, the excess, um, gets reallocated, not to the students, but actually to other investments, which is something that a lot of people find quite shocking, but it seems completely logical. Did you think it was 200000 for four years of school, or do you think they were charging extra for themselves? So if you actually even look it up online, you can find a lot of news about um, universities in the States, um, how much land they own, how much property, housing, they own, they say that they're doing it for the students, but, you know, wink, I, that hurt. Why did I wink that hard? You understand, like, they're, they're doing it for themselves. Um, people are also quite shocked to find out that these endowments and these funds often invest quite heavily in the stock market as well. So they have tons of stocks, they have tons of bonds, and usually these endowments arrange 
in the hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. Look it up. It's like public knowledge. But most people don't know about it and or don't talk about it because I, I don't know why they don't talk about it. I think it should be more spoken about. So Stanford um, has announced or it was announced from Stanford uh, that they're going to be allocating uh, 7 Seven percent of their portfolio into Bitcoin. Uh, I've mentioned before when you normally hear about any allocation from a company, from a bank, from an institution, from a hedge fund, allocations tend to be around five percent. This is just the way that the spread normally is for riskier. Um, investments, the number is usually half of a percent to one percent, maybe two, it's usually one, just to like, just in case it goes up, you have a hedge, if it goes down, it's only one percent of your portfolio. Seven percent of a school's portfolio lets me personally know, as I always say, I'm certain that all these rich people uh, know each other, these very wealthy people, they talk amongst themselves. It's the same exact thing. Was it? No, it wasn't Vanguard. Mm. It was BlackRock. And there's one other company about a month and a half ago. We found a like a PDF that was sent to some of their larger clients. And it basically uh, was talking about how a 10 to 15 percent plus allocation into Bitcoin was like kind of the right thing to do. And then you look at Bitcoin's price from back then to where it is right now. And it's like, oh, yeah, they were totally correct. So I wonder how many of those people actually shoveled millions of dollars into Bitcoin and then made an incredible amount of money back. Uh, so apparently, um, they've been investing for a while, uh, but now we are just hearing that the, that the allocation is going to be 7% into Bitcoin. So whenever you hear me say that there's not a lot of Bitcoin left, depending on the video, I assume it's kind of like tunnel vision. You may go, there's not a lot of Bitcoin left because of BlackRock. There's not a lot of Bitcoin left because of this one company. And it's like, no, it's, 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 the, it's the entire spectrum. They're all buying up massive, huge amounts of, of Bitcoin. I even found one of the older articles. As always, the articles are in the description below for those of you who want to peruse and read through it. Uh, we're back in 2021. Actually, it was actually 2019, but 2021 was when the reports were being filed. We found out that Harvard, Yale, and Brown have also been buying Bitcoin for about four or five years now. There's no um, exact number as to how much they have because these are private universities and therefore the information is private and not made public. Uh, but we do know that <laughs> even in the article... Uh, it says these schools have multi-billion dollar endowments and have been buying Bitcoin directly uh, from exchanges as well. So we can kind of assume these universities probably have more than an entire Bitcoin, which also then leads me to the conversation. Uh, and, I, and, and, I, and I'll try and make it short here. What do all these people know that we don't know? What does it take? For these universities, these banks, these institutions that have been around for 100, 150, 200, 300 or something years, there's a lot of other stuff to invest in on the planet. And I mean, even we can even go as and, 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 and say gold if you want to really put it into that, because a lot of times we'll constantly hear on the news and on TV and from in, in investment managers that gold is kind of the way to go. Imagine being a university and you have, you know, you have a lot of money to throw around, but you want to really make sure that you get your return just right. So you buy a land, you buy a property, you buy volcanoes, whatever rich people are buying these days. And one of the things that you also put a 7% allocation into is a digital currency that's only been around for 15 years, which means that around five years ago, when it was around nine, Bitcoin's around nine, 10 years at that point, you were also then buying it. Why? Who told you that? What was the reason? What exactly caused these institutions to start buying that Bitcoin? Very, very fascinating when you think of all of these things that are constantly in play. Remember before uh, we had news, this was, I mean, a while ago, we found out that apparently, I mean, this is kind of obvious. There are a bunch of people within the Congress and the Senate within the United States who are also holding Bitcoin. I mean, it's also kind of given away because they're also like always pro Bitcoin laws and stuff like that. And it's like, I, I know you got some. And then we heard this was 
this must have been 2020, maybe even 2019. Um, there's an Eastern European country um, where they apparently made it a law that if you are a part of the 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 um, part of parliament, you have to uh, say what all of your assets are. I don't know why. Maybe it had to do with something like anti-corruption. It could be a billion and a half things. But a lot of them were posting that they owned a huge amount of stocks. They owned property. Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, they own property. And there were about, like, I think 10 people who owned Bitcoin. But I think collectively they owned around half a billion dollars worth. I think I'm certain. I'm certain the number was half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. I'm certain that that's the actual number. I'm, cer I'm certain of it. And that was also a number of years ago. But then this news also gets swept under the rug. People pretend that it doesn't exist. If you add up all these numbers together, there's literally not a lot of Bitcoin left. This is why when you hear about the supply shock or there not being a lot, it's when because it's any time that a big purchase happens, the price is going to go up now. Because there's constantly less and less Bitcoin than there literally was the day before. If we constantly have inflows, constantly have inflows of half a billion dollars per day from BlackRock and Fidelity... What do you think is going to happen if someone tries to do a two, three million dollar purchase? What if you have collectively over the course of a day, besides the institutions, besides the companies, you have normal people who collectively around the world are putting in 10 million dollars collectively, millions and millions of people, 10 million dollars to buy Bitcoin, the price is going to go up. Now, couple that with half a billion dollars from th these two companies. I'm tired of rambling, but you understand what I'm saying. It's really insane what's happening right now. And a lot of so much of the news is is constantly it's not swept under the rug, but no one is reacting how that's it. No one's reacting how I assume normal humans are going to react by this news. This is something that's been around for 15 years. Bitcoin hasn't been if Bitcoin had been around for 145 years and everyone was OK, cool. University bought some. Fantastic. You know what 7% of a multi-billion dollar endowment is? You know what it means that all these other companies and countries and institutions and schools? These are the schools that we've heard about. What about other minor schools in the U.S. who might only have a... Are there any schools that still have like ten, fifteen thousand dollars dollars semester? I, I, I'm, I'm asking honestly. I don't know what the numbers are now. I don't. It's not something I keep track of. Imagine if they only at the end of the year have an extra $45 million and they go, okay, half a million dollars, you know, let's put it into Bitcoin just in case. The amount, the sheer amount of institutions who are buying is completely staggering. But I mean, there's also, you know, last point, uh, why we keep getting these analysts and these companies and, and on and on chain analytic firms who are talking about, yeah, it looks like Bitcoin might be going to $150,000 this year. Because I'm sure that they're seeing all these movements. For those of you who missed it, it was like seven or eight videos ago. I don't know which video. There's a whole bunch of videos. There was a video um, where there was this guy on you on Twitter who's posting like just new wallets. He literally like finds new wallets that are made. And he's like, 13,000 new wallets today. 21 new thousand wallets today. Fantastic. So and so and so. But he looks at some of the wallets and he's like, this one particular wallet, he'll show it on screen, like on the, on, on Twitter. And it's like, well, this, this one wallet was created 14 days ago. And every day they've been buying 200 Bitcoin consistently like every single day and they're not stopping there was even one wallet we were talking about a couple days ago as well that was buying 100 bitcoin per day and then one day they bought 1700 and then 100 again and it was like so the 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 21 million continues to to dwindle uh we also just got news that apparently the number of uh lost and gone forever coins is, is above 7 million now that's the you know if you once again Look through the other videos. It's a lot going on. But yeah, it's really crazy to be in this time. I had a, I assumed for a while we would not get to this level of price, of accumulation, of like energy in the market to like 2030. I'm not the only one, right? Because this all seems quite sudden. It's happening very, very fast. And it doesn't seem to be slowing down. And for the love of goodness... At the time of me making this video, we still have not gotten to the halving. So, 
who knows what the future holds, but I know it's going to be completely insane if all these people keep buying up all the Bitcoin and then there's none left by the time we get to the actual halving. Yeah, Stanford, Harvard, Yale, and what was the other one? And Brown are all buying Bitcoin and have been doing so for a number of years. I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.